In the last video, we had a discussion about what all career choices or what all profiles we have got for you in order for you to start your Salesforce career. I have not got that for you. You have got, for, got it for yourself by Salesforce. But in this video, we're going to talk about the learning path which you need to follow in order to uh, become anything that you want to become out of those different career choices and what exactly is the learning path or how does it actually look. Uh, what and, and yeah, what all you need to learn in order to become a Salesforce technical architect? Uh, if you like, what all things you need to do in order to become a Salesforce uh, what consultant? Uh, what all you need to do in order to become a cloud professional or a cloud expert? So that that is exactly what we are going to talk about in this video. And apart from that, we are gonna, uh, we're, we'll also go, we are also going to talk about uh, the pay scale of different different profiles as well as the experience that it requires in order to be one. Uh, the effort that it requires in order to become uh, XYZ and this XYZ uh, is basically the different career choices or different profiles in which you want to in which you can uh, build your career in and uh, yeah I mean and how how much effort it requires in order to learn that particular thing coming up about the learning path it all starts from becoming or learning Salesforce administrator or app builder no matter what you want to do or which profile you want to build your career on, you have to first learn uh, Salesforce admin part as well as app builder part. Let me tell you why. Uh, and a lot of people might say the otherwise as well, that if you want to be a developer, you do not have to actually learn the administrative part or the app builder part. But that's not true. Because Salesforce always recommends or Salesforce always suggests you to use the point and click tools with the help of which you can build or develop something rather than just going right into the org and writing down the code to build any functionality. If something is possible with the help of point and click tools, always and always try to do that uh, with the point and click tools rather than the code, right? So a lot of people who directly become developers uh, just start writing code for anything and everything which they get as an assignment to develop um, in, into the, their project delivery or anything, which is exactly where it starts going towards the wrong direction. And after learning the Salesforce Administrator and App Builder part, you've got three different choices. Let's see what they are. Number one is Salesforce Developer. So if you're someone who can be can code and who's actually interested into coding, I would recommend you again to become a Salesforce Developer. And if you're not interested in coding, then move towards the second option that we have available over here, which is Salesforce Quality Assurance Engine. And if you don't want to become any of these two, then you should consider becoming a cloud expert or a cloud professional of any of the clouds, like Commerce Cloud, Marketing Cloud, CPQ, Salesforce Industries, Financial Cloud, whatever, yeah. There are different clouds that are available on, on Salesforce. So you should consider uh, becoming a cloud professional rather than any of these two profiles which we have after admin. Becoming a cloud expert will open up a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors for you which you cannot even imagine. So this is the learning path for all of these four profiles. Now if you want to become a Salesforce Technical Architect, the way towards becoming a Salesforce Technical Architect uh, goes after being a Salesforce Developer. So yeah, once you have spent enough time being a Salesforce Developer, like let's say four to five years at least, uh, and again, it's it's not about the years, it's more about the experience and the exposure that you've got while working as a developer, uh, which matters, right? So, but but I'm just like uh, stating it in, in a particular number, like four to five years. Some people might take eight years or some people might do it in three years. It completely depends on you. But if you want to become a Salesforce Technical Architect, the learning path goes from being a developer and then moving towards being a technical architect. And if you do not want to become a technical architect uh, after becoming a developer, you can also move towards being a Salesforce consultant, which is again the fifth uh, profile, or I guess, one, three, four, five, yeah, fifth. No, it's sixth. So yeah, uh, if you want to become a Salesforce consultant, you can become that after getting enough experience as a developer. Or if uh, you, like a lot, I, I've seen a lot of transitions happening uh, for a lot of Salesforce quality assurance engineers becoming a Salesforce uh, consultant. So if you are a Salesforce, if you want to become a Salesforce consultant and you are currently a Salesforce QA, you can become a Salesforce consultant by being a QA as well. So the path towards being a Salesforce consultant uh, doesn't necessarily go towards being a Salesforce developer first and then being a consultant, though it's a good thing to go towards this path because you'll be able to understand what all it takes in order to build an application and you'll be able to provide uh, you'll be able to provide your perspective as a developer as well by being a consultant so it's it's a good part to go through but uh, yeah another part to go 
for uh, being a salesforce consultant uh, goes through sales being a salesforce qa so if you are a salesforce qa and you have spent enough time uh, making sure whether the applications are working fine or not and you know ins and out of the platform and everything you can become a salesforce consultant as well the last profile which we have got is uh, of a cloud consultant so when i talk about cloud professional there are different different roles for different different clouds of course uh which you can work on but if uh, you've got enough experience on to that particular cloud let's say marketing cloud you can become a marketing cloud consultant uh, after being a marketing cloud administrator or marketing cloud developer for a while and then you can become a marketing cloud consultant in which role you'll be taking care of the clients uh, and you'll be helping them get the best out of the marketing cloud and the path goes from being a cloud professional first and then the consultant Now is the time to look at the information which worked as a clickbait for you to click onto this video to watch it and that is pay scale for all of the salesforce profiles which we are talking about in here see so starting with the first profile which is salesforce admin let's talk about the pay scale first so the pay scale is just okay and uh, the i mean it's not very much uh, because a developer can also do the job of an admin so companies prefer to hire uh, someone who can do both of the things rather than just being an admin especially in india so the pay scale is not as high as uh, it is for the other profiles uh, if what's to learn it not much if uh, if you if you want to learn it you can just learn it in like max max 60 to 90 or 100 hours uh, in which uh, yeah I mean, yeah, it's it's easy. It's it's easy to learn. It's not that hard. Now let's talk about the experience required uh, in order to start this job or start with this profile. There's no experience required for this, and getting an entry level position, it is easy. But uh, there are very less openings out there uh, for Salesforce admins, so it might. you might find it difficult to get an entry level job as a salesforce administrator now let's talk about the next profile salesforce developer the pay scale is high yeah it is very good uh, the efforts to learn it is moderate uh, you just need to learn uh, apex uh, then lightning and then some javascript and uh, yeah while learning lightning you will be learning javascript of course and then some api stuff integrations and stuff like that which will be easy for the person who knows coding or who knows how to code or who is interested into learning how to code so it is not that difficult uh, to become a salesforce developer one who is interested into coding can become a developer with an with a moderate level of effort uh, any experience required no no it is it's not necessary but if you have it already it's fine getting an entry level position very easy if you know how to code uh, so uh, yeah there are companies out there a lot of companies by the way out there including syntexa which i am running uh, who hire people Based on their ability or capability to write code into any programming language out there, and they hire them initially, and then they train them onto Salesforce. They teach Salesforce administrator or Salesforce developer to them, and then they put them onto the projects uh, to do the deliveries and stuff, right? So getting an entry level position is uh, easy uh, for for becoming a Salesforce developer. It's not that difficult. The next profile is of a quality assurance engineer. So uh, the pay scale is good. Uh, it's not as high as of a developer, but it's good uh, compared to that of an admin. Uh, the efforts to learn are not much. All what you need to learn is uh, some concepts. Are, are some concepts of uh, uh, quality assurance engineer and the Salesforce admin part or the app builder part. Uh, that's all what you need. So the efforts are not that much uh, as it is for developer or any other profile. the experience required not necessary it is not necessary to become a uh, to have and uh, have prior experience to become a salesforce uh, quality assurance engineer but if you have prior experience as a quality assurance engineer and you want to switch your career towards being a salesforce quality assurance engineer from any other technology then uh, i mean it would be good for you right so uh, you you'll get a job very easily uh, you might get paid higher as well compared to that uh, of a fresher right so that's what it is getting an entry level position is easy it's not that difficult so the next profile which we have got in our list is technical architect and uh, talking about the pay scale of technical architect is something uh, which i think i should not talk about but it's actually very high you cannot even imagine someone who is uh, just working as a coder or who is just uh, serving onto a technical profile and still getting paid that high because uh, it it didn't used to happen back then right but yeah nowadays with uh, technologies booming up and the people who are experts into these technologies uh, they're getting very highly paid and salesforce technical architect is one of the highly paid 
technical jobs which are out there available onto the market on a global level so if you really want a lot of lot of lot of money uh, without actually uh, putting anything onto risk i think you should uh, like think about becoming a technical architect uh, so that you get paid very 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 high but the efforts uh, to become a salesforce technical architect are again uh, very high and uh, it requires a lot of experience a lot of knowledge a lot of dedication a lot of determination and a lot of exposure as well in order to become a technical architect so the efforts are again uh, equally high uh, as of the pay scale compared to the pay scale right and uh, do you need any experience uh, to become a technical architect yes at least 5 years uh, you, you yeah i mean not not definitely not less than that uh you you at least need 5 years of experience in order to become a technical architect is getting an entry level position easy uh for technical architects no uh nobody hires any fresher or any uh and anyone who is just new to this technology onto the technical architect role because you can only become an architect when you know everything like ev all of the ins and out of the platform and uh, how to architect solutions onto it right for any particular business or for any particular situation or scenario given so there there are no direct entries uh, that happens onto this profile uh, but the transitions happen and the transition happen uh, sometimes within the organization as well and uh, uh, yeah i mean so someone who's working on in a company in x company uh, as a salesforce developer might transition their career towards being a salesforce technical architect uh, in another company or into that same company as well so that's how it goes for salesforce technical architects the next profile is of a salesforce consultant uh, which is very again again very highly paid uh, depends on the location as well and depends on the, to the level of clients that you are uh, interacting with or dealing with uh, this completely varies there is no fixed or yeah there's there's no where for for any profile that that there's no fixed compensation of, of course but yeah it it varies it varies on a larger scale uh, compared to any other profile and the efforts required to learn uh, to be a salesforce consultant are again high not as high as it is for uh, becoming a technical architect but you need uh, a lot of experience and uh, you need to have that thing in you that you are able to relate businesses uh, with uh, the platform or with the cloud which is provided by salesforce and uh, yeah able to get uh, like able to get get the solution out of it right uh, or yeah get the best out of the platform for that particular business do you need uh, experience in order to be a consultant yes uh, you need at least 3 th to 4 years of experience in order to be a consultant that's how you get experience and exposure in order to help different different businesses uh, by being a consultant uh, is it difficult to get an entry level position uh, for a salesforce consultant yes of course there is no doubt about it Okay next profile cloud professional the pay scale is high yes it is very high because it's uh, again a very niche skill uh, and rare as of now uh, not a lot of people train themselves on to being cl being cloud professionals uh, they do not specialize their skill into any particular cloud rather they uh, prefer being uh, a a platform developer or they want to switch towards being a technical architect but uh, the ones who actually uh, may, uh, like try to build their career onto any particular cloud and uh, excel into it uh, get paid high compared to that of a developer but that completely depends on to the effort that you are putting up and talking about the efforts let's see how 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 effortful or effortless it is to build your career onto uh, to build your career as a cloud professional so as the table says it is moderate but with a star asterisk uh, that is if you can find out the resources of training uh, it is e it is moderate otherwise it is difficult because there are not enough resources to learn so let me just share you a story with this um, for a lot of clouds out there uh, for a lot of clouds let's say uh, commerce cloud marketing cloud or let's say salesforce industries or financial cloud this almost like no resources available uh, with the help of which you can become one and even if there are resources available there are just documentations which are just like uh, which are just available out there for uh, yeah for the for the people who who want some help or for the, for the people who are supporting the customers or who are supporting the clients not to actually train you for that particular cloud right so if you can find those resources to train yourself onto any particular cloud it it is not going to be that difficult but if you talk if you if you yourself have to find out the material or you yourself have to find out the training content to build this skill 
I think it will become difficult for you, or it will uh, the efforts will just double double up, right? Uh, in order to become a crowd professional, if you do not have the training resources already, do you need experience in order to become a cloud professional? At least one to two years. And is it difficult to get an entry level position into uh, any of these clouds? Very difficult. Why? Because no company actually entertains freshers or someone who's just, who's just starting out to be a cloud professional and uh, taking care of the uh, of their clients uh, on like, yeah onto that particular cloud. So it's, it's difficult relative to other profiles which you have got in here. After looking at this table, you can clearly see or identify that the pay scale is more either when the skill set is difficult to develop or it is difficult to attain uh, that particular skill set or when that particular skill set is rare to find out there in the market available into people. So if you're out for money, like a lot of other people out there, all what you need to do is work is either to work very, very hard to build a skill set for which you'll get paid the most or you'll get, get very high, uh, very highly paid or you need to learn a skill set or build the skill set which is rare to find out there in the market and uh, which you have learned and which you have uh, become an expert, which you have which you have learned and you have become an expert into it and you're getting the competitive advantage uh, of having less people into that particular market or into that particular niche skill set and uh, getting highly paid. By doing either of these things, you can earn a lot of money, but in order to do any of these things, all what you need to do is learn a skill set. Now don't wait till tomorrow to start learning a skill set and building your career into Salesforce. Start learning Salesforce from today so that you can get the competitive edge in order to build your career. Let me know your thoughts, comments down there in the comment section if you think that the pay scale for some profile is higher or lower or what exactly it is. And if you guys want to debate onto the pay scale or onto the learning path, you can do that with me onto the comment section. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button over here with the notification bell icon so that you'll be the first one to get notified whenever we post videos like this, which will be informative and helpful for you in order to build your career onto Salesforce or in order to learn anything related to Salesforce on YouTube. So please, hit over here. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.